Good morning from Istanbul and welcome to another installment of Real Turkey channel. This month we're going to talk about the Turkish economy. I usually try to put out at least one video about the Turkish economy and select certain topics which are of current interest. Today we're going to talk about Turkey's conundrum. Turkey is reporting relatively high GDP growth rates. That's per capita income or at least disposable income seems to be growing in inflation adjusted terms. The conundrum is at the same time Turkey's poverty rates are soaring. And if you live in Turkey or if you are visiting any of the Turkish cities, I think you would agree with me that poverty is becoming rampant. In fact, the broadcaster presenter, Mr. Atilla Yeshilare, is 60 years old, and he can say without hesitation that it has never really been that bad in Turkey. We're talking about hunger, malnutrition, people not being able to turn on their home heating because they can't afford the bills. It is very unusual to find an economy where what colloquially called the trickle-down theory, this is not trickle-on, but trickle-down theory doesn't work. Trickle-down means, you know, if an economy grows, it's usually the case that the rich get richer, but the poor also get richer, so that the distance between their relative incomes is almost fixed. In Turkey, that's not happening. More importantly, after this year's robust growth, which largely comes from the base effect of the pandemic in 2020, growth will slow down in 2022. However, Turkey's inflation is endemic or entrenched, and it's likely to hover around 20% per annum or more next year. That obviously means that poverty will be with us for the time being. Why do we have such rampant poverty? Well, largely because Mr. Erdogan has very strange economic theories. And another reason is there is rampant corruption and theft, to be perfectly frank with you. So poverty is going to be with us as long as Mr. Erdogan is with us. There is one last chance for Mr. Erdogan to rescue his reputation and his nation, which is a social expenditure package, sort of like what Biden is trying to do in the United States. And it will be direct cash injection to Turkey's working classes, the poor, the small businesses, etc., etc. And I shall close by stating that while the social expenditure package is going to be somewhat useful, it's very unlikely to diminish poverty and it is going to have only a very temporary effect. Okay, uh, first of all, let's document poverty. And here I refer to, okay, I refer to an article by Bloomberg, which is titled, Erdogan's War on Interest Rates is Making Turkey's Rich Richer. Uh, our studio is rather pedestrian, so I link these articles and keep them on screen for a while so you can copy it and read it at your own leisure if you don't trust me. Essentially, what the Bloomberg article says is what I have claimed at the intro that it is Erdogan's strange economic policies that's making the rich richer and obviously the poor poorer. What are these policies? Well, first of all, the strange monetary theory that lower interest rates will also lower inflation. This has never worked anywhere at any time in the world, and Mr. Erdogan is the only one who believes in this theory. But since he runs the central bank, as well as Turkey's government, the central bank is forced to reduce interest rates. As interest rates are reduced, Turkey's currency is also losing value. And after a while, the weakness in the currency spreads to inflation. Look at Turkey's inflation rate. The official inflation rate is now 19.9%. But producer price inflation, PPI, is over 45%. Moreover, 
Several public opinion surveys show that the people of Turkey don't really believe the official CPI. When asked what their perception of inflation is, the answers center somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. So imagine you have a country where most of the wages and salaries are indexed to the going rate of inflation, but it's undermeasured. People think they are being robbed out of their disposable incomes or real salaries because actual inflation far exceeds stated inflation. And now let's look at uh, Turkey's poverty statistics. This is a chart I find very useful. It is from World Economic Forum website, and it reflects the results of poverty and social inequality perception survey in 28 countries in conjunction with global surveying agency Ipsos. Now, the global average of participants who think poverty and social inequality is a problem or is becoming a growing problem are on average 33%. Let's look at Turkey. We're at 38%. Now, let me show you how fast Turkish economy is growing and you tell me whether this is feasible. Turkish GDP usually is published four months uh, after the real time. That is, we're going to get third quarter GDP only at the end of November. Instead, I'm showing you a very good proxy, a preliminary indicator of GDP, real growth, which is the manufacturing PMI. See, it goes up and down, but the point is it's always above 50. A PMI headline in the number above 50 means that an economy is expanding. At least the manufacturing sector is expanding, but since most of the GDP is derived from manufacturing and exports, this is a fairly good uh, proxy, uh, mimics the GDP very well. So this is good. I mean, we're one of the few countries among emerging markets that are growing robustly. Unfortunately, it's not being reflected to the national well-being. Unfortunately, some of these polls are in Turkish. I One of the main difficulties in continuing this YouTube series is the dearth of English language material. And until I can create my own original material, unfortunately, I'll have to translate it for, for you. This is October Metropole Survey. The question is, how bad do you think is the cost of living increase in Turkey? 37%, 37.1 to be exact, say it's unbearable. I mean, I'm bankrupt. Another 34.5% says it is becoming extremely difficult to make ends meet. Another 22.1% claim that it is very difficult, but, you know, they can survive. So, you know, more than 80% of the participants either have not enough money to feed themselves and their families or are, are barely earning money enough to make ends meet. This is, this is poverty. I mean, there is really no other, there is no better explanation, visual explanation than this chart. Let's look at another one. This is the same agency, Metropole October Poll. And it asks the question specifically, can you meet your basic needs? That's, you know, rent, food, clothing, heating, transportation. A staggering 28.7% say, nope, you know, our family can't even meet. It's just the basic essential needs to survive. Another 49%, roughly half the population, claim they can only meet their very basic expenses. So the salary or income comes in, it goes to food, rent, shelter, and there is not a single penny left for anything else, like your child's education or to visit the doctor or go out and, you know, catch a movie. Okay, so this is the 
this is the extent of Turkey's poverty, and it's certainly been reflected into political polls. This is the October poll by Avrasia, in English, Eurasia Agency. It pits President Erdogan against four potential candidates in the next presidential election, namely CHP leader Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, EYP leader Ms. Meral Aksiner, Deva Party leader Ali Babacan, and former Prime Minister and the Chairman of the Gelecek Future Party, Professor Ahmet Davutoğlu. The blue bars are those who say these names can run the economy better than Erdogan. Look here, Erdogan lose, is losing to Kılıçdaroğlu, to Meral Aksener, to Ali Babacan by miles, and even to Premier Ahmet Davutoğlu, who's not an economist. He's a political scientist. I mean, would it be too far to say that if they put me on that poll, I would be doing a better job than Mr. Erdogan too? And once again, let me stress that this is really, really unusual. I mean, it is quite true that capitalism is an inherently inequitable system. It is set up to make the rich richer, but it's not set up to make the poor poorer. Otherwise, the system would not have survived. The rich can get richer as long as the poor do benefit somewhat from the growth and development of the economy so that they don't riot on the streets. <laughs> but in Turkey, that's not the fact. I mean, if our president, Mr. Erdogan, is to be believed, the Turkish economy will close the year 2021 with a 10% or more real GDP growth. Translated into per capita or per person income, this means the average Turk must feel at least 8 to 8.5% richer. But look at this. Seventy-one percent of participants claim that the soaring cost of living is either unbearable or they can barely make ends meet. This is extremely, extremely unusual. Why is that the case? Well, as I've said, Mr. Erdogan's strange policies, lowering the interest rate to stimulate the economy, which don't do the job, simply because no one trusts Mr. Erdogan, but they weaken the currency so that as the Turkish lira becomes weaker against the dollar or the euro, uh, the cost of goods imported increase, which means that within a few months after the currency weakness, inflation keeps rising. So if you have Turkish lira depreciating against dollar, say 10%, in a month, within three months, that adds two percentage points to the going rate of inflation. And this year, Turkish lira lost roughly about 20% against the dollar. For two years in a row, it's vying for the worst currency in the emerging market space with Argentina. Is the government doing something about Turkey's poverty? Well, that's very interesting. There was an article in Financial Times by Ms. Laura, Laura Pital, who reported from AKP insiders that Mr. Erdogan simply didn't believe that the economy was heading south. In fact, some of his lieutenants gathered their courage and asked him for an audience to explain the plight of the economy and his own orders. And Erdogan said, you're lying. You're lying. Where are you getting this? Everybody is happy. There are rumors that he is sick or that he may be losing his mental coherence. I don't want to get into that. This is not a gossip program, and I certainly don't want to speculate on anybody's health. But there might be some truth to the assertion that he, he doesn't think too clearly. Because if he were to step out of his palace and just walk two blocks in the neighborhood with his 500 bodyguards, he would see that people are really suffering. At the end, though, 
it seems that the news is getting to him. So after months of denial and prevarication, Mr. Erdogan instructed the ministries to roll out a social expenditure package. This is, as I said, is very similar to what Biden is trying to do with the additional supplemental welfare checks, what a lot of European countries did during the pandemic. Uh, the noteworthy point about Turkish economy is it's coming uh, after the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic has passed. This article, uh, you know, it's republished, reprinted in our English language website, paturkey.com, but it is from Reuters, and it explains the basics of the direct, direct income support package for households. Essentially, it will be financed by the cash reserves of the Treasury. It could be worth anywhere from 100 billion to 300 billion liras. Remember now, just roughly uh, 10 billion liras is 1 billion United States dollar. It would include massive hikes to statutory minimum wage, maybe 25% per annum, adjustments to pensions, uh, one-time improvements to the salaries of critical public servants such as doctors, nurses, teachers, police, etc., etc., as well as direct cash injections to needy families. Well, I commend Mr. Erdogan for instructing his ministers to prepare such a package. I am, you know, a fiscal conservative. I believe in balanced budget budgets and tight monetary policy. But the primary purpose of government and economic policy was to make sure that all citizens have bread on their ta table and they go to sleep without freezing to cold. Fiscal austerity, monetary prudence comes afterwards. And I think Mr. Erdogan is grasping this message and he is preparing to spend more on Turkey's poor. But will it suffice? Will it improve things permanently? Unfortunately, no. Something like 300 billion liras, that's 30, 32 billion, 33 billion dollars, would be a massive package would eliminate all the surplus or accumulated cash in Treasury's accounts, and it will provide relief to the workers and to pensioners for the next three months or so. But remember, remember what I said about 2022. Here, just a second. Okay. Oops, 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 oops. In 2022, Growth is expected to slow down from roughly 10% to 3%, whereas there is really no hope that the current inflation rate of 20% would decline, which means people's ability to find jobs will get worse in next year, while their incomes will be continuously eroded by soaring inflation. The implications are simple. The fiscal stimulus package is good, but it only solves the problem temporarily. It doesn't cure the disease. What is the disease? The disease is the system by itself. It's a system configured for Mr. Erdogan, his family, and his cronies to make money on the backs of the poor people, essentially stealing everything that the state produces, controls, or licenses. There is also mafia in Turkey. On top of that, we have Mr. Erdogan conducting strange economic policy exercises on a nation with an economy worth $750 billion. This is not the time for experimentation. Unless he learns to stick to orthodox economic policy. That is, look, if people are poor, spend on them. If inflation is too high, raise the interest rates. Uh, cut the budget, etc. Unless he learns to abide by the standard and globally accepted rules of the economic theory, Turkey's uh, poverty will continue. And at the end, 
all the Turkish people, including AKP's voters and Erdogan's fans, will suffer. But as importantly, if he doesn't care about his nation, Mr. Erdogan stands no chance of being re-elected in the next scheduled elections, which may happen later in 2022 or by June 2023. If you want to find out how Erdogan is killing the Turkish economy in detail, I broadcast a video a couple of weeks ago. If you want to find out how the opposition is capitalizing on Mr. Erdogan's silly theories and his weaknesses to march to the power, there is another video. I am extremely grateful for your commentary. In fact, some of the audience is reaching me from overseas countries. This is not a channel that generates huge amount of traffic, but as long as there are some watchers, I will continue it. Thank you very much. You have just watched another broadcast of Real Turkey Channel presented by Atilla Eşilada.